guys, welcome back to CJ's Keto Kitchen. I just love easy weeknight dinner ideas, don't you? And this one definitely is. It is going to be spinach artichoke chicken bacon and it has bacon. Come along with me and let's get started. I used to be extremely fond of a pizza from a local take and bake place and it was spinach bacon artichoke and um, I found it delightful. <laughs> And I wanted to create something that was reminiscent of that, but without, you know, of course, the carby crust. So I came up with this idea, and it is actually a spinach bacon sauce, and it has artichokes in it. It's very creamy, and it will go over your chicken, and then it's baked in the oven. So um, it only has a few prep steps, and so it's something that you can get in the oven very quickly on a busy weeknight. So come along with me. And let's get started. So I've done one thing ahead of time, and that is I have got my bacon crumbles warming. I have a half a cup of bacon crumbles, and I just buy it already pre-cooked. If you were going to start with raw bacon, you probably want about six slices chopped up. So I just rewarmed that in a little bit of rendered bacon grease. I also have some rendered bacon grease heating up in my skillet because we are going to cook our chicken, at least brown it a little bit before we put it in the oven with our toppings. So I've got that heating up. So over here I have four chicken breasts. These are about eight ounces a piece. I'm going to pound them thinner. You want them about an inch thick if you can. This is going to act as the plate for our yummy topping, our artichoke, spinach, bacon, parmesan sauce. You could absolutely use thighs in this, but of course thighs are much smaller, and the reason I wanted to use breasts in this particular dish is because I want to have it act like a plate for our toppings, or almost like a crust, if you will. So I'm going to start pounding these thin. You just need a meat mallet. If you don't have a meat mallet, you can use um, a rolling pin would also work. If you don't have either of those, you could probably just cut these breasts in, you know, in half horizontally, and that would also work. But I'm going to bash these a little bit with my meat mallet. Yeah, he sets my body in motion. He just, he knows how to turn things up. And he knows what gets me going. Yeah, like. A little text saying, hey, what's up? They look at me, I'm in a bad situation Look at him, he's got a bad reputation They be looking at us Thinking we are too much Look at me, I'm in a bad situation Look at him, he's got a bad reputation This is a very good reliever after a stressful day If you've had a stressful day at work Reputation, they be looking at us mm -hmm. Why do I need to be good all the time? So I want to beat it just a little bit more, but you can see that it's getting thin, which is what we want. I'm wrapped around his finger, but he is mine. Don't care what they say, too late anyway. Why do I need to be good all the time? Okay, that one's pretty thin. And I'm going to put it in the skillet to start letting it brown while I beat the rest of these. Be good all the time. I'm wrapped around his finger, but he is mine. Don't care what they say, too late anyway. I set my bacon aside in a separate bowl because I'm going to use the skillet that I rendered it down in to finish cooking my other chicken breast. I took my chicken and I drained off some of the residual moisture because we're looking for brownness on these. And so sometimes when you're cooking chicken, it can sweat and the moisture from the bird will come out. So you might have to take your chicken with a lid over to the sink or your garbage can and drain off some of the moisture because we are looking for brownness on these. So while those are cooking or browning, because they're going to do most of their cooking in the oven, we can go ahead and get started on our sauce. So you're going to need four ounces of cream cheese, and it needs to be softened. You also want a quarter cup of mayonnaise. 
you want a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. I have some shreds, so I'm just going to use those. You could also use the, the powdered grated kind if you prefer. I usually find my shreds over in the deli area. We're going to need artichoke hearts. And artichoke hearts are found in the vegetable aisle with the canned vegetables, green beans, corn, that kind of thing. They're generally up high on the, on the top shelves. You can get them in jars or you can get them in cans. But we're going to need about seven ounces. This is a 14 ounce jar, so I'm gonna use about half of it. And these are hearts, which is the inside of the artichoke. It's the softest part of the artichoke. These happen to be stored in olive oil. Sometimes you can find them in water. I'm going to take my kitchen shears and just kind of pop these hearts down a little bit because we want everything to be fluid when we top our chicken with this sauce. So I'm just using my kitchen shears. You could chop them before you put them in the bowl if you wanted to, but this is just as easy for me. And I will likely do the same thing again with our spinach. I'm going to take a look at our chicken. This one has the little bacon pieces, so that's perfect. So you can see that it's getting some browning, and that's what we want. This one is getting brown, and that one. So it really did help to drain off some of our fluid because we would like that brownness because they're actually going to cook in the oven so we're not really concerned about getting our chicken fully cooked we just want to get a nice brown on it the next thing i need is chopped spinach and frozen is your best bet on this because we're going to drain it and squeeze it to dry if you start with a fresh product it can take a little longer. You can if you want to, but you're going to have to cook it down if you start with a fresh product. And to me, it's just easier to begin with a frozen product. So we want half of this bag. We want about five ounces of spinach. And mine is already kind of thawed because I left it out. If you have not thawed yours, you're going to need to heat this in the microwave or somewhere so that it is thawed not frozen any longer. Now spinach can be quite wet and we don't want that in our topping so I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to squeeze it over the sink in this bowl and get as much moisture out of my spinach as possible. And you can see that quite a bit of moisture comes out. I'm going to add our spinach to our mix. That one is brown on the other side. I'm going to turn it off. And these are also brown, so I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to preheat my oven to 375. I'm going to add a little bit of seasoning to our mixture now. I'm going to add a couple of dashes of my favorite 21 Seasoning Salute. And I'm also going to add a little bit of garlic powder. I'm also going to add a little bit of Himalayan salt. And we are going to put our bacon in with this mixture. And I'm just going to give everything a stir and get it all incorporated into our softened cream cheese and mayonnaise. So this is very reminiscent of spinach dip, if you like spinach dip. It has some of the same flavors. The spinach dip usually has more vegetables in it and sometimes water chestnuts, which can be a bit carby. So everything has been incorporated. I'm 
gonna set that aside. So I have my baking dish here and I'm going to place my browned chicken into my baking dish. I think I'm going to spray it though. I'm gonna give it a quick spritz with my avocado oil spray just to prevent any sticking, which I don't think will happen, but I like to take that precaution anyway. You could double this recipe if you wanted or needed more for your family. You might have to use more than one baking dish. I'm going to pour the chicken juices over the top. Now I'm going to start placing our spinach artichoke bacon mixture on top of our meat. I'm gonna try and do it as evenly as I can. Some of these breasts are larger than others. When you buy them in a package, sometimes it's difficult to tell. After these are almost finished cooking, we are going to add a bit more additional cheese in the form of mozzarella, and that's also going to melt over the top of our chicken. Okay, so our chicken is nice and evenly covered, and we're going to put this into our oven that we preheated once again at 375 degrees, and we're going to bake these for about 30 to 35 minutes. So in we go. I'm going to put the cheese on the top and I'm going to broil it. So I want my oven for broil, but I'm going to get it out. And you can see it's made a nice juicy crust on top. Now I'm going to put our cheese on and I'm going to broil that. And I'm using mozzarella. If you wanted to use a different kind of cheese, you could. And I'm going to put this back in the oven for just a minute or two until our cheese melts and broils. Okay, that only took about two minutes once I put it on broil because our oven was already, of course, warm to cook our bake. So, and here it is. And you can see that the mozzarella cheese has browned up nicely, and that's what we want. And I'm going to take this out and let it sit for a few minutes, and then we will serve, and CJ can have a taste. Hi, CJ. Hi. It is time to eat dinner. Wait a minute. I gotta make sure I don't look bored. <laughs> All right, yeah. Okay, so we are having spinach artichoke chicken bake, and it has bacon. Hmm. Because well, bacon. Sorry, it's gotta be good if it's got bacon in it. That's right. Good. I like the bacon. Addition of the bacon. Yes. That's good. It's really good. Good. I think people will like it. Didn't really take that long to make. Nope. I mean, a little bit of prep time. We shot this video pretty fast. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's good, baby. I think people will like it. Good. Good job. Thank I'm you. I'm gonna sit down and eat too. All right. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us again tonight, you guys. We hope that you enjoy the chicken bake. I know that we are definitely going to. I also would really love it if you would consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. You're very important to us and we would like you to stick around and watch some more videos. In fact, some will be coming up after this video if you would like other recipe suggestions. Of course, all of our previous recipes and this one will also be found on our blog and that's cjsketokitchen.com. We are also on social media, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter. 
we have a lot of teaser photos there and we also talk a little bit about things that we're doing. Um, all of our recipes come out on Sundays and our keto conversations come out on Wednesdays and sometimes it's ketogenic food unboxings, sometimes it's just general conversation about ketogenic topics. So we would also like you to join us then. So please come on back and see us next time and we'll see you then on CJ's Keto Kitchen. Bye.